Here are three times things didn't go as planned with flags in Australia. This is the Australian national flag, not to be confused with the New Zealand national flag. The Flags Act of 1953 legally defines this flag and gives a description and illustration of how the flag looks. Pretty straightforward so far. There's a blue background with a Union Jack. On the fly side is the Southern Cross, and on the hoist side beneath the Union Jack is a seven-pointed star. The diameter of the star is three-tenths, or 30% of the width of the flag. Except when the Flags Act was first passed in 1953 and assented to by the Queen herself in 1954, the law erroneously reads that the star should not be three-tenths of the width of the flag, but three-eighths. This is an increase from 30% of the width to 37.5% of the width of the flag. While the law did still illustrate how the Australian flag should look, for seven months of the year of 1954, until the law was amended, though it was retrodated, if the official description of the flag was followed, it would result in a chunky star. But this wasn't the only time Australia has messed up with its flags. The Aboriginal flag of Australia and the Torres Strait Islander flag have been flags of Australia under the Flags Act since 1995. Except that there was an administrative oversight which led to these proclamations expiring at the start of 2008. This meant that in January 2008, each of these flags had to be re-proclaimed as official flags of Australia. And speaking of these two flags, both are actually protected by copyright under Australian law. This is really tricky, because Australia proclaimed these flags as flags of Australia without acquiring the intellectual property rights. In some other places in the world, simple designs such as geometric shapes often can't be copyrighted, but in Australia they can, and in the case of the Aboriginal flag, this was upheld in the federal court in 1997. The Torres Strait Islander flag copyright currently belongs to the Torres Strait Island Regional Council, which does allow reproductions of the flag under permission. The Aboriginal flag copyright currently belongs to the designer of the flag, Harold Thomas, who has licensed the design to various companies, although this includes a company which has the same director as a previous company that was fined $2 million for misleading consumers about the authenticity of the Aboriginal art they sold. This has restricted the flag's use on clothing and merchandise which is a decision the designer has stood behind, resulting in a petition with over 75,000 signatures to free the flag from exclusive licensing agreements. An artist should definitely get paid for their work, but it is questionable whether it's appropriate to have exclusive licensing agreements that allow non-Aboriginal companies to restrict the use of the Aboriginal flag, even if it is legal to do so. There has been lots of discussion about this issue in the Australian media in the last year, which is really complex, there's more to this story, and it's ongoing, so if you're interested in learning more, I'll link some extra resources in the description, which I definitely encourage you to check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.